What's up everyone, this is Justin from Mishimoto and this week it's going to be a busy week. As you can see behind me here, over here we have our G80 M3 and we're going to be taking a look at our first air intake prototypes. Over here we have our F10 M5 and we're going to be diving into the engine bay, maybe take a look at the intercoolers, possibly the charge pipes. But first up, G80 M3. Let's go check with our engineer, yeah? See how it's going. Let's go. All right, yeah, tell me what you got. So at this point, we have already finished 3D scanning the engine bay. We designed our intake in SolidWorks, and we have a fully 3D printed prototype in the car. This is the uh, passenger side intake. This is the driver side intake we already installed. So what's unique about this setup is that this car has a twin turbo, and we have two completely different independent in intakes. We are even using completely different air filters. We have already done flow bench testing on both sides of the intakes and from flow bench results we have decided we are going to replace the passenger side turbo snout but we are not going to replace the driver side turbo snout because there's not a whole lot of room to make this car much bigger to get flow. Uh, give me just go back take a step back. Why are we replacing the other one though? Why are we replacing the one turbo snout? We are going to replace the stock aluminum turbo snout with our own. The reason for that is to minimize bend in the intake track so we can maximize flow. So this is a three intake tube we're investigating on the driver's side. This is a stock intake tube. This is our initial design. So what we find out on the flow bench is that there's more potential flow to be gained by further increasing the diameter of intake tube. This is why we designed a second version driver side intake tube. We pretty much use all the available space to us to maximize flow. It's just a bigger diameter, right? No, it's like the center of this one. This is actually pretty interesting now that you're reminding me. You cannot you cannot really tell from visually, but the cross-sectional profile of version number one is a circle. Version number two we made it, we flattened it to get more cross-sectional surface area. So essentially the, the top section, the bottom sections of the intake tube are a little bit more flat, right? No, it's like the oval is like this way. It's like egg shaped, right? You look from this side, it's the oval is this way. So the intake tube is taller. We have strut tower bar that rises across on top of the air boxes. So one challenge we face is trying to make the two intakes, which are completely different in geometry, match each other aesthetically. So as you can see, the top surface and this top surface are actually exactly mirrored. Uh, and we also mirror the cutout to go around the tower bar. So now ha we have finished the test fit. We are going to load the vehicle onto the dyno. And the next time you see the vehicle, we will be testing our intake prototypes versus stock intake. Now, yeah, I did go into great detail on how we plan on testing the G80 intakes, but that is something we're gonna save in for the next video. So in the meantime, let's go check in with Mitch, our other engineer, and see how the BMW F10 is going. I think we're uh, taking a look at some intercoolers. I'm not even recording. You can't be talking good content and have Nick stand behind you like a crazy person. So here we have the F10 M5. Um, it's a twin turbo V8 with the turbos on the inside and the intake manifolds on the outside. Uh, definitely presents us some challenges having two intercoolers and two charge pipes, essentially two independent turbo systems. Uh, so we have to design these two intercoolers. Uh, they are a little bit different and they fit differently. They're not exactly mirror images of each other. So what's, what's different in the fitment? Uh, one thing you could see is that this intercooler is actually a little bit farther forward than that intercooler. They're the same size, but the end tanks are going to be different. Uh, one other unique thing about these intercoolers is that the throttle bodies are on the intercoolers instead of the intake manifolds. When I started to dive into the car, we noticed that there was a lot of damage from heat. Having the turbos in the middle right there and the downpipes and the cats and everything, it gets very hot. So the first thing I ran into is that this charge pipe, the coupler, decided to melt itself onto the turbo. You could kind of hear it all crunchy. That's a nice sound. And you could see all this damage just from trying to get it off. Uh, I actually had to chisel the 
rest of it off of the turbo itself. So that's one thing that we're gonna have to keep in mind when designing the new charge pipes is that they are going to be exposed to a lot of heat and we have to make them withstand that heat and last and be able to perform uh, for a very long time. So what does 3D scan in the engine bay entail? Well, we're able to map out everything in the engine bay and we're able to do it in different stages so we could get different layers of parts. So at first I will take everything out and scan the space where the intercoolers and the intakes originally went and then I'll start putting everything back in so it'll slowly fill up the space and then once I get it in the 3D CAD world I'm able to turn on and off different features so I could um, for instance just take the intercoolers out put my intercoolers there see how they fit um, I could open and close the hood to make sure that it doesn't interfere with the bottom of the hood um, and just make sure that everything is going to fit before we go and cast the inner cooler end tanks and start making cores. So what we have right here is the majority of the data from the scan. So you can see everything's in there, even beyond the uh, inner coolers, you can see all the, the piping that's down there that's underneath the inner cooler we still have as well. Uh, so it's a pretty complete set of data. I even have the, the fan shroud, which was scanned outside of the car, is now in the car in the model so that we could see the, some of the tight clearances within the intercooler and the fan shroud, as well as um, the intercoolers and some of the parts below it. So once you finish processing, you'll be able to essentially move each one of those components to be able to design within that space? Yeah, so once I have everything together and processed, I'll be able to organize it. I'll be able to take some data off of it as well. So because I scanned everything in different layers, we're able to take that hood and essentially remove it and see the hood clearance between the intercooler and the hood so that we don't build the intercoolers too big so they hit the hood and the hood doesn't close. Um, so we have other constraints like that. Uh, you can see this giant bar going across um, for the cross member. We can't really go beyond that. So we're basically establishing our boundaries, see where we can make the intercooler bigger so that once we design it, things will go smoothly. So what's next up on the scan? Next up is, I guess, designing. Yeah, next up, we're just gonna go into uh, making a plan to design it, see um, what, what kind of concepts, where we want to increase the size, uh, if there's any other features we want to try to incorporate, um, and then just go right into SolidWorks and start designing it. Perfect. All right, now that we have the air intake prototype completely installed in the G80, we're gonna make sure we get the vehicle prepped and ready for some dyno testing. In the meantime, once Mitch finishes engineering an F10 intercooler, we're gonna be checking that out as soon as we get it into the engine bay. So the next time you see these vehicles, that's where we'll pick it up. See you then.